Hi, it's Wayne O'Keefe and I'm fishing the estuary here, the Maribyrnong River. It's tidal and the, the, the tide is actually going out at the moment. Had a bit of rain, water's coloured uh, and there's a bit of breeze. Could get very stormy today but I'm going to take a chance to see how I go. My target today is Brim, so we'll see how we go. I threw some burley in just um, about a minute ago and you can see that uh, the I didn't even have any burley in the burley cage this time but I put the burley out while I was actually setting my rod up and I've just had a couple of uh, bites there so um, getting the burley in when you first arrive really works well because if there's fish around it will get them active and uh, and it does a lot of work attracting them into the area so it can give you uh, you know a little bit of uh, oops advantage now I've got to sort of focus on this rod, but it can give you a little bit of advantage in that um, the fish that are in the local area will be drawn towards your, where you're going to be casting, and that can happen um, while you're setting up. So it's worth doing. You might get that first fish on first cast. So now I've missed these because I wasn't really working on that properly, but um, it just shows you I've had a couple of bites already. And so if I get the burley happening now with my burley cages, uh, it can really get the fish going today, or at least for as long as they're going to be feeding. Uh, this would be small, whatever it is. Yeah, it'd be a, probably a small brim or something like that. Uh, I mean, they're only small fish first, but that's you always expect that. Yes, it's going to be a tiny, tiny. Oh no, it's a goby. So I used to think these things were um, small mulloway, but they're they're actually not. Somebody. Somebody corrected me and told me that these are these are, are gobies, which were apparently introduced on the Japanese trawlers. So when they take on ballast in Japan, so they draw up water into their ships um, to create ballast for the, the ships, these things would go in and then when they got rid of the ballast, when they got to Australia and um, got rid of their cargo, this is what they would have. So that is a goby. Interesting species. Yeah, I don't know what you're meant to do with these. I'll return this guy. I'm not sure what's meant to happen. He's supposed to take them out or not, so I'll return them until I know more. If anybody knows what you're supposed to do with uh, with the gobies, uh, please let me know. Okay, let's have another cast to that spot again. Bit of a dip over there. And if I just line it up. Ah, oh, beautiful. Right to that spot again. Feel it, let it sink. I can feel it going down. It's sunk now. That's good. Okay, so that's on bottom. Um, I'm feeling it to where it sinks so that I can, um, I know that it's right where I, I need it to be. I'll just tighten that up a bit. In other words, I, I feel it hit bottom before I tighten up because if I tighten up before it hits bottom, obviously I'm moving it away because I'm estimating how, how far I have to cast out as well as what direction. So I've got a marker on the other side that I use as a target, so I cast to that target. But not only that, I need to make sure that I don't tighten up wheel in or anything like that um, until I know that my my burley cage and bait have landed on the bottom where I've been putting all of the burley. If I wind in, um, I could just pull it away. I could just pull it away from what my target area and then that, that wastes it because the fish will have more than one spot to go to to find that burley and my bait. So, anyway, we'll see how this goes. See the water birds over there, which are having a bit of fun, possibly on some of the floating burley that, um, that I had put in. So when I came here, I, I just threw in um, a couple of handfuls, landed in that spot, which is good because that's about as far as I can throw. And, uh, and it seems to uh, have done its, been done it doing, oh, there we go, doing its job. Okay, that's not bad. So not a big one, not a big one, but I've got light line here because I think, as I've said before a couple of times, I like to use light line because because I know there's only going to be small fish here. Um, at least it you feel like you, you're getting a bit of sport out of it. So this is probably, by the way, this guy is, is fighting. It's probably a, a brim, and no, that won't be a big one, but got a little bite here. So let's see. Yeah, not a big one, but that's 
good to have a first catch and this is what I've got little guy here and a little tiny piece of uh, squid so okay first brim so that's what I'm targeting today I want to get the brim out so I just uh, this guy back in so okay doesn't uh, of our next cast Oh, beautiful. That is right on the money. That's exactly where I'd thrown my burley out previously. Let that sink. Hits the bottom. Okay, well, I almost missed this one because I wasn't concentrating, which is uh, very much like me. Anyway. Not a big fish again, but um, at least it's it's catching something, and I hate to go home empty-handed, or at least I hate to go home not having caught anything. So Oops. okay, little brim. Okay, all right. So they're about. Oops, there you go. So hopefully there'll be a lot more of these, and we'll uh, have an enjoyable day. <laughs> okay. So. Got the fish biting, getting plenty of bites now. So what I really want to do is keep the fish there. So I put the burly in, and obviously they're responding really well. So I want to just keep them, keep them happy by getting plenty of burly in there and draw more in. And then I'll put a uh, a rod with stronger line and a bigger hook and bigger bait, just a little bit to the the right downstream. See if I can pick up any big ones that uh, are too smart to get in close to my small bait. Oh, on the money again, so if it, as long as you keep it casting to the same spot every time, you can really keep the fish coming in. Let's hit bottom now, tighten up. So. Okay, so important to have a target on the other side that you, that you cast to. Okay. Oh, this will, this will be small. I think I might have missed him. No, I still got him, but oh, it's small, very small. Okay, so and I've got a plastic bag as well. Right. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. So. When, uh, <laughs> okay, so here we go again. Cast to that same spot. Oops, sorry, bird. <laughs> Almost nailed me a water bird. Okay, just feel that drop to the bottom. Well, this must be a few meters deep there, even though I'm sort of casting three quarters of the way across, so it's not the deepest part of the river, but at least it's, um, it, it's quite deep now, especially with tidal influence. So the tide has been coming in. The tide will be going out at the moment, but it's it's you know the higher end of the tide, even though it's going out. But we've had the flow of um, all of the rainwater coming in, and that's um, that that I think is what's really sort of uh, helping me today with getting these fish so quickly. This could be a short burst because they might stop feeding you know, in the next uh, hour or so, so I've got to take advantage of this. As I said, I haven't put my other rod in yet. Got to get that in if I want to get some other big ones. This one's got a small hook. This is my, this rod has got my survival gear on it, which I've, um, I've got on my website, you might have seen. It's got a small trace on it to make the, the small trace and small hook make the bait look absolutely natural in the water and act naturally. So um, if the fish waft by it, or the current's moving any other bait slowly, it'll do the same thing with this bait. So the fish have real confidence and pick it up. And uh, that's what I want. On those really, really hard days, sometimes you have to get, you have to do that. Now I'm getting bites already, so obviously this has brought them around. Yep, these are small fish though. You can see the bites are, are small. So uh, I don't expect to get anything big yet, but maybe, 
maybe if I keep that burly going in, it'll attract the bigger ones in. And then, then again, maybe all I'll get today is small ones, but I actually like to catch fish. I mean, I hate going somewhere and coming home empty-handed, so this is what I like to do, even if they're going to be small. Although when I say empty-handed, I don't really take the fish home. Um, I, it's catch and release for me. I go to specific places sometimes to get fish that I'll eat, but not often. I just enjoy the sport. And, it, and besides, in waters like this, especially after a bit of rain, sometimes you know, the, uh, the quality of the fish itself is not great because these waters are not... Um, that they are polluted to a certain extent. And especially when you've had rain come in, because that's, there we go. When you've had rain come in, of course, you um, get everything washing off the rain, roads and gutters and that coming in. So this is a small one. Wait, well, did I miss him? No, I still got him, but he's, he's very small. Oh well, got to get the small ones first. After all, there's more small ones in there than there are big ones. Okay, so let's just see him. Yeah, another small one. Little one, but anyway, just shows you it's a good healthy waterway when you're getting plenty of small fish. Ooh, just hooked too. So we'll just get him out and back into the water, little guy like that. See a fella? Okay, and he's back. And just as I was saying, I have a very small trace, very, very light trace. This trace here is much finer than my main line. And the reason for that is that hook and bait and everything will move around naturally because a heavy line is not nailing it to the bottom like a big anchor rope would. It's, it's going to float around, it's going to move around. So that, that lighter trace is doing a lot of good. The thing I've got to be careful about is that if I catch a bigger fish, I've got to play it properly, otherwise he, he could break that. And when I try to, you know, I wouldn't try to lift it out of the water because uh, that's lightweight. It, it's going to break so what I do is just have a net with me but it's surprising how big a fish you can get I mean I've caught um, fish I've caught kilo size brim on light traces like this so it just shows you that uh, you can get the big fish in I've caught small pinkies on that but I've had a rod like this with plenty of flex in it which helps to play them so it acts as a shock absorber uh, and I've played them well and there haven't been a lot of uh, snags around if there's a lot of snags around, oh, well, even if you've got strong line and you've got snags, you're probably going to lose your fish. But anyway, that's worked okay. All right. Now what I've done, I've done two things. One is I've um, I've taken my trace off, my shorter trace off, or sorry, my finer line, lighter trace off, uh, because I just had a big fish break me off, which is a sign that there's good fish in the area. I put a bigger hook on, and I've shortened the distance between my hook and my burly cage, my weight. I don't want the fish to be playing around with too much now. I, I need them to, I want to know when they're, I, I want to give myself the best chance of hooking them, which means less line to play with uh, and more chance of me feeling them immediately they pick up on the bait. So I'm getting little bites now. Now what'll happen is I probably won't get any other fish other than that, um, the big one that broke off. So. Okay, this is there's plenty about, but you have to change things. So if the bigger fish are coming, you've got to you've got to bulk up a little bit to make sure you can catch them. So that's what I've done here. So we'll just see how we go. Yeah, they're just hitting, dropping, hitting, dropping. So there's plenty of little fish in there, and you you'll get that. And that's what the, the Billy will always do. I just want their big brothers to come in. for that to, to pull around. Yeah, little tiny taps on the tip of the rod. So, if we just pull into that. Okay, that's that feels quite good. That feels a bit better than what I've had before. And, um, so let's just see how we go here. There's a little bit of a point, which is good. I mean, it's not a huge fish, but been using the current and oh, not huge but anyway we're getting there oh come on okay so okay a little bit better so I'll just keep going but um, 
the one the, the one that I missed would have probably been twice the size of it. Oh, probably even more than that. And it, uh, it broke the line. So let's not little guy. Okay. Okay. Uh, this one here's a little bit bigger. He uh, just uh, he hit quite hard. And uh, oops. And there's pulling off a little bit of line, but that's good. So. Bit, bit bigger than those small ones I've been catching, which is good, but he's still not big. I mean, none of these fish are, are that big, but that's all right. I know that uh, there will. There, I know that there's big ones in here, so <laughs> at least that. And um, so uh, let's see. Okay. All right. He's getting a bit bigger. All right. So this guy's yeah, he's a bit bigger. So that's that's all right. So let's uh, let's see how we go with this. So, it's cast in. Okay. Right to my target zone. Let that hit bottom. Because, well, so do you. Yes. Plenty of wildlife around. <laughs> There's a cockatoo just above. <laughs> Letting me know he's not impressed. Ah, and he's got mates as well. That's good. Stuck on something. Oh, I got a snag. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I thought that was a snag. Gee whiz, that was really unusual. I thought this guy was a snag, but um, it was just the way he was. He, he basically moved out into the um, moved out into the flow of the river and was just creating resistance. So, felt like a snag. It's a fish. Who would have thought? <laughs> so just as <laughs> just as I was reeling in, I got my last fish. Little one, but the last fish for the day. So it's always nice to get one on the, the very last cast. Oh, and it is small. But it's probably about a, a dozen fish I've got in about two and a bit hours, so not bad. Good way to end of the day.